Hi everyone, this is Brad Cummings from Board Game Geek. I'm here with Koi, uh, the man from Cryptozoic. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about, about Hex today. Uh, for those that haven't heard of Hex, can you explain it to us briefly? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Hex is actually the first uh, digital game from Cryptozoic, and it is trying to reinvent what a uh, online trading card game can be. It is actually an MMO TCG, which you've never seen before because this is the first one. And what it's trying to do, and I think it's doing very well, is roll all the things that are great about an MMO in terms of community. So you have uh, guilds and auction houses, all the great you know, uh, character development, leveling, storytelling, all the things that are great about an MMO, uh, but then brought into the world of a TCG. And so a full-fledged, real trading card game where you buy packs, you build decks, you have uh, you know, a fairly complex set of rules with you know, past priority and all the things you'd expect from a, a traditional trading card game, but then married to all these great community-specific and storytelling-specific elements of an MMO. So you, know, you think about joining a guild in an MMO, what does that mean to a trading card game? Well, what it means is that you'll have things like a guild bank where you can actually log decks into the guild bank, other people in the guild can take them, play them, and write notes on it, so that as a group you're working to sort of fine tune your decks and make them as competitive as possible. So you've got all these really great and innovative things you can do that uh, are very specifically about being an MMO and a TCG together. And if you go to hextcg.com, you can get a lot of the detail about this. There's so much innovation and so much invention in the game, it's hard for me to get through all of it when I talk about it. Right. Um, are you guys, so this is, you're being, uh, sorry, it's being built in-house this time around? Yes, that is correct. We, uh, we, we're, we're doing the development on the game, we're doing uh, publishing on the game. It is uh, quite an undertaking, but we've been working on it for about two and a half years, and uh, it's really shaping up. We're getting close. We hope to have our, uh, al our uh, closed alpha with all of our Kickstarter backers uh, by the end of September, fingers crossed. And uh, I think once people get a chance to jump in and start to play it and see just how incredibly polished and experienced it is, they're going to be blown away. It'll be the best looking trading card game online that's ever been created. Great. Uh, why did you choose to do this digitally first rather than a physical product? Uh, no, it was a very specific decision. So. Um, we talked about it actually, like do we want it to be a physical game that has a digital component? And the reality was um, all of the design space we could capture by having it be digital only was incredibly potent. And so by making that decision and saying we'll never sell a physical version of this game, we were able to do all of the crazy invention that a digital only TCG can do, like socketed cards. Having cards with sockets where you have gems and you plug it in and you fundamentally change what the card does. Like being able to create copies of a card in your opponent's deck, replicating cards and having them change and have their change state persist through the match. Even if the card goes out of play, it comes back and it's still changed. There's a mind-blowing number of features that are possible only because it's a digital game first and foremost. And so it was kind of a no-brainer at one point when we started to talk about all of those great innovations and I feel like we made the absolute right decision. And even rolls into the MMO side, you know, all of the great design choices uh, are available to us because it's digital in that space as well. So for all the PVE and having the double back card where it's like every card flips over and has a back and then you flip it again and it has a double back clearly because it's digital, I can do that. Couldn't do that with a physical card. And on there I can have achievements and leveling and trophy cases and all these really great things. Again, digital only. Very cool. Uh, so, um, so what is kind of the uh, the purchase model of the game? How to is it free to start out, or do you buy in? How does it work? Uh, yeah, so it's a, a free to play game. Uh, when you first log in, you're going to get a starter deck. Uh, you can go. We have 42 dungeons, and so we have hundreds of hours of gameplay and hundreds of cards that you can actually get through all of the free to play component. And I mean. You can literally probably play 100 hours plus and never spend a dime. Um, so it is a real free-to-play game. And the only way that the game is uh, monetized is that we're going to do booster packs. And so we sell you, like a real TCG, we sell you packs of cards. And uh, we're very, very fixed on this idea that when you buy platinum, which is our real world to, to game currency, you're going to spend the platinum on only a couple things. One of them is to buy packs. 
one of them is to buy a starter deck, and one of them is to enter tournaments. And the reason that you have to pay a Platinum to enter tournaments is because I want that pool to be what I use to make the rewards for playing in that tournament. Because if I just generated packs randomly and gave them to you as prizes, it would devalue all the packs. And this game will have a pretty robust trading mechanic, so you have a full auction house, and uh, the secondary value of the cards is something that's very important to a TCG, and this one in particular. And so we're being very careful about the economy. We also have a VIP program, and you're going to be able to have that be sort of a monthly subscription, and you're going to get one pack a week at half price. So instead of $2, you're going to get it for a dollar. And you get a couple other really cool little features like entrance into a tournament and a couple other elements. Um, but that's it. So there's no, no paywalls, no energy, no, none of the nonsense you see in a lot of free-to-play games will be incorporated into Hex. Hex is really this sort of virtual version of a trading card game and married to all of this great sort of PVE role-playing experience. Okay, great. Um, one other question uh, in terms of pack releases, you know, in TCGs, you kind of come out in full sets. Is that how it will work, or will new cards come more intermittently? No, no, uh, we're just like a TCG, and so we'll have a certain number of sets a year, and a certain number of sets make up a block, and eventually we'll do block rotation, which helps us control the meta, so that, like, you know, you have different archetypes and decks coming out. Um, we're very much like a standard trading card game when it comes to how we're going to release content. And I think that's an important distinction between what we're doing and what you may see other people doing with their TCGs, is that um, we are actually a trading card game company. That's what we do first and foremost. That's our bread and butter. All my designers are all TCG designers that have worked on many TCGs. And so all of the development and design from how many cards we put in a set to how often we put out a set to what's in those packs is all based on this deep understanding of how to make a trading card game. Awesome. Um, one last question. Just, I want to know some about your experience with Kickstarter. Um, I know you guys did a Kickstarter campaign. It was hugely successful. Um, do, can you talk to that a little bit and how it went and how you see the future? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, the Kickstarter experience was, like I always say, surreal. I did not expect it to be that successful. I was really blown away. The most important thing we got out of it was really not the money, it was the community. So now I have this super robust community of super passionate uh, fans of the game that are so involved. I mean, there are hundreds of YouTube videos and there's guilds with hundreds of people. Our message boards are flooded with people talking about the game. Having that very vocal, evangelist community form around the game before it even comes out is so valuable and I treasure it so deeply um, that I really think that was more important than the money and Kickstarter in general um, I love and I think it's absolutely the future in many ways for uh, creative development um, having the ability to go you know distribution has been going away for a long time with things like Steam or direct-to-consumer and the internet has really opened up distribution so that it used to be distribution was king like they really controlled what content got out there that kind of went away and now it's really become you know the money piece of how do you get something made and get it to a consumer became the big obstacle not the distribution and so Kickstarter gets rid of that so now you go directly to the consumer and say hey listen do you like this idea and if they do they'll give you the money and the distribution exists already you can actually create products that would have potentially never made it through the companies that in the past controlled that sort of thing, like the publishers. I can't tell you, like I'm in the games industry 20 years, how many awesome pitches I saw for amazing sounding games where the people who were in charge of making the decisions couldn't quite see the vision and so that game never existed. And that is tragic. And so now you have Kickstarter giving creators the ability to go directly to the fans and just say, do you want to see this? And then what you're going to see is very distinct visions of what these different games and stories and comics and movies can be that you would have never seen as a consensus sort of publishing activity. And so that's where I think it's so, so important. And for me, I mean, that was the, the experience I had as I would tell people potentially to help us with the game, MMO, TCG, their eyes would glaze over, they don't know what the heck a TCG is, they'd be like, eh, I got no idea. And so I'm like, all right, I know there's an audience. I know it. This game needs to exist. And so when I finally was able to go through Kickstarter to the fans, there was. There was a need. And people are excited. And it's funny because now all the people that I had talked to the game, I talked to a lot of people about the game before Kickstarter, they all kind of came back. Now, I think I finally get what you're going for here. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. Now you get it. Like, we had the 15th most, uh, we had the 15th biggest Kickstarter ever and top 10 Kickstarter for games. 
Uh, so yeah, it was a it was a pretty big success, and it it means a lot to the future of this game. And uh, it, frankly, I don't think it would have ended up happening if we hadn't had that successful at Kickstarter. Oh, uh, just one silly question: Did you get any phone calls? Based on your video, I, I got hundreds of phone calls, uh, you know, during the Kickstarter period. The phone is actually off right now. Um, that phone was specifically for the Kickstarter, uh, but it was funny. I was getting calls all hours of the night. I had one guy call me. I was sitting at my desk at about 11:30, call me, and I don't, I'm like, oh, I picked it up, and we talked for 45 minutes about Ultima 6. Like, he, I, he, we had a couple quick questions about hacks, and then wanted to tell me about how much he loved Ultima 6 and we sat and talked for almost an hour about Ultima 6 so uh, yeah the phone calls were super fun I super enjoyed it but the phone actually isn't on right now I'm clearly focused on making the game so. that's a good call well thank you so much no that's problem thank nice you. To talk to you and I hope everyone gets a chance to go to uh, hextcg.com and check out the game and uh, you know it's gonna be free to play so hopefully you'll jump in and give it a chance thank you all right thank you <laughs>